Hello, it's Stuart here from The Wool Patch, and here is the top 10 of my favourite, most often used tools and accessories for knitting. We have two new entries, three non-movers and one high climber, so let's take a look at the chart. Up five to number 10, the project bag. Basically a bag to hold your yarn, pattern and needles for whatever project you're knitting. Knitting can take time, so you need to store your project safely. Anything from your local yarn shop carrier bag to a luxury handmade bag can be used. Down one to number nine, spare waist yarn. You may need this for a particular cast on, like a tubular cast on, for example, or for simply holding your stitches. Spare yarn can also be used as lifelines. This can come in very handy if you have to frog back. Frogging back to the lifeline means stitches are locked in place and also means picking them up to start again is so much easier. Our first new entry in at number eight, blocking mats and pins. It's the bit at the end that can make all the difference to the look and feel of your finished knit. Blocking is the process of wetting or steaming your final pieces and pinning it into position to set the finished size and even out the stitches. Our highest climber up 10 from 17 to number 7, the Swatch Ruler Needle Gauge. You can buy these two tools separately, but they usually are combined. Measure your knitting needle or crochet hook size in metric, US and Japanese standard sizes. The Swatch Ruler allows you to isolate the stitches in your tension square to easily count both stitches and rows. Creating a tension square allows you to see if you meet tension to that of the designer of the pattern. If you don't meet tension, your garment will end up a different size and you could waste a lot of time and money. There's a non-mover at number six, scissors. You will use them infrequently per project, but you will use them. Usually at the end, when you're sewing in all your loose ends from where you've joined new balls of yarn and where you need to tidy up the ends so it looks all neat. It's time for our second new entry in at number five, your phone, tablet, and apps. Try downloading the app Knit Companion. It's an app that can hold all your PDF digital patterns and you can use it to count your rows and stitches. It will remember your place on the pattern too. You can also use your phone tablet for YouTube and tutorials. You can also visit Ravelry, a huge knitting and crochet database community for finding patterns and sharing projects. Down to to number four, the tape measure. Used often in every project, you could be following a directive in the pattern like knit until you reach 23 inches or you could be knitting to someone's actual size, so you must keep checking your length by measuring. And then, when at the required length, you can continue with the pattern. I love a fun, retractable one. And there's a non-mover at number three, the darning needle, a big blunt needle with a large eye. All knitting projects will have a cast on and cast off tail, so that will need to be sewn in and covered up. Also, if you are creating a garment in pieces, flat knitting, it will also need to be sewn up. This is where you will use the darning needle. Another climber up two to number two, crochet hooks. Since I started to knit, I found I've used the crochet hook over and over again. When asking my YouTube viewers and shop customers, they all had the crochet hook in their top three. I've used the crochet hook to fix drop stitches, to pick up stitches, to seam garments up, and my favorite, to cast off. It's an invaluable tool. Buy a set so you have a variety of sizes at hand according to the project that you're working on. And here we are, non-mover at number one. It's been number one for many years. The stitch marker. They come in all shapes and sizes, fancy ornate ones that look like jewelry or the classic plastic lock type. No matter which, they all do the same job, and I advise you getting a Tupperware pot full as you will always use them and lose them. They have many functions. They tell you where you are on your pattern. If you're working in the round, it tells you where the beginning of the round is. When doing techniques like short rows, they will tell you when to turn. And they also tell you how many rows you've done. Don't keep counting your rows, 
place a stitch marker, say at every 10th row, and make your overall count much easier. It's no wonder the stitch marker is number one and why it has been for so long. If you want to purchase any of these tools, then follow the links in the description to my shop, The Wool Patch. Do you think there should be something else in this top 10? Then let us know in the comments so we can build up an even bigger list. Happy knitting!